Welcome back to Avenues of Wisdom. Hello, this is Kim. We speak things on all light, all love, all wisdom. And I'm excited to share this bit with you guys. My classmate Steph and I, we just, uh, we always, we literally, we got along as soon as we met. And uh, I'm so thankful for her. And she's just a sweetheart. And uh, we had some reflective courses over the summer, you know, us being occupational therapy students. And Dr. Savoya, shout out. Dr. Savoya, we love you. Um, our last assignment for one of these courses, you know, she gave us some freedom to, to be a little creative as we are as OTs naturally. And instead of just doing an assignment, you know, you type it out, you submit it, you kind of just want to get it done. We had the option to, you know, create a podcast. So, you know, Steph, Steph calls me and... <laughs> It's typical. We'll t- step every time there's an ass- there's an assignment, we have to kind of be like, oh, okay, so yes, let's do this. And um, so she said, you do, do you want to collaborate? Like she said, we could do a podcast, and we're looking on it. And this is not even planned. We I think we each plan to do our to do the assignment. Like you know, of course, normally you do it separately or whatever. But we were like, uh, yeah, let maybe this will just. We need something fun to crank out the last the last didactic assignment that we had we had to we had to just end it with fireworks right because that's that's how we do it so we created this podcast and we had the opportunity over the summer to have um to be back in our Maurice's clinic um that we didn't really get to use that much due to everything that happened so we had the chance to be with our community again and actually to lead a caregivers group within the community. So these were um, long-term caregivers that we uh, kind of got to lead a couple sessions with um, during our uh, intensive week on campus, they called it. And um, so we thought, let's let's just do a podcast bit and uh, talk about our experience. And, you know, also let's work in the assignment in there and turn it in. So... I want to share this with you guys, and I think you'll enjoy it. And shout out to Steph, because uh, we may continue this in the future um, as we both wrap up our last level two fieldwork rotations. And I think it's a powerful conversation to talk about our experiences and, and what we've learned as as OT students. And um, I bet you guys can guess what grade we got. I'll just leave it up to you. Uh, so enjoy. This is the OT Caregivers Podcast, and welcome, welcome back for another episode here. My name is Kim, and Steph is also here, too. Hello, everyone. And, you know, this OT Caregiver Podcast, we, as occupational therapy students, we love to touch on ways that we can help caregivers in their roles as well, um, as far as interventions, evaluations, etc., And we actually had a caregiver group that we helped support um, as far as their journey with their loved ones and ways that we can help them as occupational therapists to balance out their life um, and also help them with their self-cares. So I'm going to introduce here Steph because she's just a light. She's a gem and she'll kind of start us off. Thank you for that intro, Kim. Um, So... Yeah, like she said, we had a caregiver group, and a lot of these caregivers um, were long-term caregivers um, caring for a loved one. And so we're just going to kind of build on that a little bit by explaining some ideas that we have about how we can continue to help those caregivers, but also looking at it um, through a professional and interprofessional um, lens as well. And so when I think about caregiving, there's one quote that just really sticks with me. And um, 
the quote is, the disease might hide the person underneath, but there's still a person in there who needs your love and attention. Mm, yeah. And that was by Jamie um, Caladurello. Beautiful. And that quote, I just think about whether you are, it's a formal caregiving setting or informal, if you're professionally trained or if you're helping a friend, you know, either way, this person may present with a disease, but there's still someone in there who deserves the love and the best possible care. And, you know, when you kind of get in that professional setting, sometimes I think they can get overlooked a little bit. Yeah. You're, you're so in that realm of like, I'm just going to treat this disease and get out. And I think that's what's unique about OT is we have that holistic um, perspective. And so as an OT, we really have that um, ability to advocate for our patients and educate the entire interdisciplinary team on the profound impact that caregiving can have on an individual and how OTs can help to um, or help these caregivers navigate that pathway. Yeah, guide, like, like we basically guide them in their support. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot of times that gets overlooked. We're only treating the patient and then just giving the caregiver the instructions. I think we just need to remember that although the caregiver isn't technically our patient, they are as much about this care team as the rest of the individuals they're caring for the patient as well. And so they need to remain healthy. And, you know, as professionals, if we notice something in a caregiver, it's kind of that if you see something, say something, because they have a right to care as well. Yeah. And so that, like, kind of brings me to the next thing about how do we have help these caregivers get that support that they that they need? And, um, you know, Kim and I have kind of been talking about that. You know, what's the best way to do that for caregiver support? And one idea that we had was um, embedding caregiver support into either like pre-existing community-based programs or already day programs. So maybe the caregiver's loved one is already attending this program or they're going to treatment for something and having a resource for caregivers to go and get that support that they um, need as well. And like our, in our group, I don't, I'm not sure if I remember, it felt like, I'm not sure if one of the, the individuals shared that they had community based programs, like just for caregiver support. It felt like that was something that they, they needed resources for, but that's something right. that a lot of them struggled with too. It's like to, and then that's what I like when we were sitting there together. I saw them vibing off each other because they were like, they could relate and they could just share with, with you know, open open dialogue, like just to support each other as well. Right, exactly. They really just started building those connections. And I remember one of the group participants mentioning how she would have loved to like almost have a mentor through this process of kind of like, hey, you know, I can relate to what's going on and where we're at. And um, so I just definitely think that's something that we can contribute as healthcare professionals. And um, going off that a little bit more, I found an article um, by Alter, Mulvick, Saldi, Manis, and Steffens um, back from 2018. And in there, they noted that there are over 43 million adults in the United States alone that provide informal caregiving and that just has a huge um strain so while caregivers are providing support to loved ones to improve the like their loved one's quality of life it's impacting their own physical and psychological health and putting them at risk for needing care themselves and so then it's just this big um, spiral that's not being addressed in our um, health care facility and a lot of the times caregivers have feelings of um, guilt or feeling bad about enjoying things that are meaningful, those meaningful occupations that are important to them because their loved one isn't able to participate those. And that was just something that really stood out to me and was like a profound moment of OT can have an impact. Yeah. 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 To help them balance too. I think that was a really good article. Yeah. That you found just to, I didn't, I didn't even realize, you know, over 43 million adults, you know, yeah. someone is always caring for someone. And that's what's so special about, you know, us being OTs is that we can also help the ones that care, you know? And yeah. And that's, that's something you, you brought forth as, as well, sharing your experience with the group. And I think they really, they really appreciated you connecting that, that piece as well. Because 
little do you know, it's it's one of the OTs and students who have been through the same experience that they're also going through, which is yes. pretty unique to have, you know, the perspective from both sides, but it's kind of figuring out what's that, that pathway from here on out mm-hmm. and being an advocate for both sides and how do you move that to create change. Yeah. Beautiful article, Steph. And that... Thank you. Yeah. You have anything else to? Uh, no, you can you can take it away there with kind of what you were uh, thinking on. I think you had an article that you had uh, wanted to discuss a little bit. Yeah, there was another one. Uh, behavioral and, and occupational therapy therapy for dementia patients and caregivers. So Frankenstein and John 2020. And this one was kind of a different take. It was really interesting. It, it kind of dove into... Um, the methods section, including three behavioral manuals for intervention. And what it noted was that, you know, there's various ways to help these caregivers cope um, with the experience that they're going through. And I think there's there's that education piece that's really important that um, we, we kind of touched on and provided in our group. But I think what's most important was for them to share during that time. And this this article also, you know, touched on, you know, the interventions that they can do. And we plan to do a breathing activity, which is what this research kind of touched on. But we didn't really get to the breathing because it was like people just wanted to share and um, delving into that area of relationship counseling that it mentioned for these caregivers. Um, And I think that's like a great point that you, you know, you bring up. We had this plan for the group. And just kind of being okay with letting the caregivers, you know, take it as they feel Mm -hmm. comfortable. And as much as as OTs, we wanted to incorporate those coping mechanisms. What the members of our group really needed at that time was to be able to build connections with each other and find that base of support because they felt like that was the most lacking throughout their caregiver journey. And so it's kind of letting them establish that. And then after they feel like they have that, you know, trust with one another and can support one another kind of then introducing those breathing techniques down the line. So I think that is a good way to like incorporate that article into what we, you know, attempted to do in our group. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's exactly what we, we intended on, but we, we also have learned through our journey that we can plan it, but uh, it's not going (laughs) to, it doesn't always go that way. You know, yeah, we can plan with the, with the clients or the patients or what we had the group session, but it's not always going to turn out like we expected. And, that kind of leads me into, um, you know, that evaluation and intervention piece, but just just touching on that that OTPF language um, that we use as well. That's also kind of important that in the care for others, it's they're always communicating with the whole professional team, other family, their friends. They're having to balance all of that. And they're having to balance, you know, their role as caregivers and which what a lot of the people spoke about was, you know, their routine, how it's focused on, you know, the the individual, not really themselves. So we were trying to like hone it back on the habits that they could build on. And and I think a lot of them were talking about those psychosocial factors as well, um, which touched on the OTPF and them being, you know, um, one of them got emotional, you know, just just talking about how he doesn't have time for himself with that increased stress, and that touches on that that emotional regulation piece in the OTPF, and um, we just allowed for him to have that open space for him to be emotional because we felt, you know, as OTs, you have to process that, and this is the space that we set up for. So I thought that was. That was really important to note and, you know, just touching on how, you know, they had mentioned they didn't really have a lot of energy or drive to, he didn't, he, had, he wanted to ride his bike, but he hadn't rode his bike because he hadn't had time or the, the extra energy. And uh, that kind of touches on the OTPF, the global mental functions, their, their energy level and motivation. And he, he couldn't really have quality of sleep either because is he going to be called called by you know the individual because he has to be always alert so um i think he wanted to share that with us and i think a lot of the the things that they shared touched on every area of this like 
this OTPF that we've been, you know, structured with. So I had to touch that in. And that kind of leads into that evaluation piece of, I think it'd be important, you know, for us to, to have a pre or post measure, measure in that evaluation, um, just to see how our impact has helped them balance out their, their roles and their ro- routines. Um, and, right, but I think yeah. I think that's a great way for us to show, you know, as OTs show our you know value and importance and to what is effective, and then for the caregivers themselves too to realize how far they have come and the progress that they are making, yeah. and to really you know engaging in those meaningful occupations. Yeah, because it's like we we were, you know, I did a lot of listening and it was like I I saw them from a different lens. And they're they're in their own lens, like they're just so we we were trying to encourage them, just what you said, you know, that we see a different side to help you balance that out because when you're in it, who knows how deep when you're in it that you can't really process like what you need for yourself. Right. So that was kind of a, a really important piece and, and just touching on how important that that role checklist would be for them, just I some structure to identify their roles and um Steph, you also brought up the the Moho Leisure Exploration Inventory, just noting what they what they love to do for their leisure aspect, what relaxes them or what they enjoy to take them to take them out of that that caregiving space as well. So, right. And then that led to kind of, you know, the intervention piece of of how we could help them, uh, you know, balance and and heal and progress and just be heard. So it was nice that we had that that group therapy just to allow for discussion. And we touched on earlier, we had some breathing uh, exercises planned for their coping mechanisms um, and just noting on those communication strategies for their loved ones, but also, you know, you'd even mentioned stuff, it's so important to have the social support with them with each other because the one woman um she just noticed how upset she was with one of the care the care team experiences i think she was like she didn't have a a good experience um with one of the care teams and we just helped her kind of talk through that as well and i don't know if i shared this with you kim but when we were leaving the group that day she said to me she said I'm counting on, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on all of you to make this change. Oh, you didn't and, tell me? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, what? and it just really <laughs> resonated with me, you know. Um, I think just someone, you know, truly listening with the ear of their heart and wanting to make that difference instead of, you know, that routine healthcare system. And so, you know, us as new grads and going out into the field, it's going to be our responsibility to advocate mm-hmm. for that change and how can we how can we do that and make it be effective and our voice is heard yeah you didn't oh i didn't even know that she so she felt all that that day with us for her to even express yeah. that she really felt that so that just kind of notes how important it was for for us for them just to have that open dialogue how that could be how the literally for an intervention a group therapy how important it is to speak and express because then came out their emotions and right. how that is also a form of healing and it's just like so simple that we were there to kind of ignite that out of them and yeah. uh, I guess yeah just touching on you know other interventions there's so many that we talked about the leisure exploration or just building that network which was a space that we created for them as well. And then, you know, Steph, you noted how important it would be to have one-on-one therapy with them, just talking about their daily routine and and setting aside like those first 30 minutes of their day, just for, just for them, just for them. If they could have that time for them, they could, they could maybe be more clear in the day, more balanced in the day, like, you know, on top of what they're, what they're going through as well. Right. Right. Yeah, I definitely, um, you know, kind of based on the research articles and uh, the little bit of experience that we did have with them for that one group session, I think, you know, starting in those group sessions to build that rapport and that 
feel like they have a support system in that group and get to know the individuals in that system and then really break it down and start having some of the more that one-on-one um, therapy to dive deeper into some of those issues that, you know, they may not feel as comfortable sharing in the group or that is just, you know, we can target more specifically to each individual in order to provide that um, best care possible. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's really the benefit of OT, huh? Um, yeah, I think, you know, just really having that holistic client-centered care and stressing to the individual the importance of caring for themselves because the impact or that or the what a caregiver is feeling that is transferred to the, the their loved one that they're caring for you know if the caregiver stress their loved one feels that it's that transference counter transference of emotion and so like figuring out how to convey that to the caregiver so that they start to take that initiation or so that they start to initiate caring for themselves and taking that responsibility and you know, as a health professional, just really saying, I don't understand what you're going through, but I'm here to listen. I don't have any words to make your situation better, but I'm here to help work through this with you. Yeah. And, you know, truly being there for them, understanding that they're there caring for someone else, but they still need to to do the best, what's best for them too. And I think this could become like a blossoming area of OT and like really figuring out how to get this integrated on the healthcare team and a part of, you know, regular treatments when, you know, individuals do go through something. And so it's just kind of figuring out how, how to get there. What do we do? Yeah. Yeah. Cause most of the time when we're seeing someone, you know, they have someone that's caring for them for what they're going through. And that's, I could see this being an area as well. And that's exactly why we started this OT Caregivers podcast. You know, I think it's we have to talk about this and open up the dialogue because um, us as OTs, others who may not even be aware that, you know, this is something that we do to help others heal as well. So this is an area of our practice. And I just want to thank everyone for listening to our conversation. I hope they learned something from this. And- Bye. I agree. And I think we'll continue in the future, you know, not just, hey, we're going to send you home and teach you these transfer mechanisms so that you can move your 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 loved one, you know, really go beyond that and take the time to get to know them. And we hope that, you know, you all come back and listen in the future because we'd love to share, you know, taking that transfer for us of the textbook knowledge into the real real world career here and, and navigating that and, and working with all of you. So, Cam, if you have any last comments, Liz, I'd love to hear your closing music for our uh, oh, podcast. I would here. love to wrap up. We'll, uh, Gosh, we have we'll, a specific theme. We really yeah, do. Yeah, and then we'll uh, sign off here for today. And All right. Yeah, we'll we'll join you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. We want to hear you guys' feedback. And uh, here is the closing music. <laughs>